Hey, this video is for the subbing community. Those of you doing sublimation, I've been getting some messages asking about converting printers and stuff. And so um, this is a very different type of video for me because I'm usually the preacher, but um, I'm going to, uh, one of my inks is pretty low right now. So I'm going to take advantage of that as I'm filling this up and I'm going to um, actually show you what happens on a converted printer. If you're converting a printer, I've used the, I've converted the 7720, the Epson uh, wide format 7720, and also the Epson wide format 7710 is what I'm using right now. Um, I basically burnt my, uh, 7720 up. I was getting so many pizza wheels with it. I just got frustrated with it and um, decided that I was ready for a new one. So um, I now have the Epson. There it is right there. The Epson 70, 7210 is what this is. It's wide format. This does your eight and a half by 11s sub paper. Um, I always use the second tray when I do the bigger. These are 11 by 13s. And um, it says that it also does the 13 by 19s. I've never done that size before because um, I just haven't had a need to. But uh, with that size, I think you have to put it in the back, if I understand correctly. But I've not actually used that size before. So um, I'm just going to go in here and get my uh, yellow ink is the one that is... low so I'm going to go in here and fill this one up now when you do this when you very first go to convert um, one of these printers there's some of them that convert the way I always check to see like can I convert that to a sub ink or not what's easiest for me uh, I kind of am just self-taught um, over the last few years I've just kind of figured things out on my own before I was ever part of any subbing community or anything like that. So what I did is I would go on eBay and I would start looking at printers. And then when I would find something that printed the size papers, images that I wanted, um, which I'm pretty partial to Epson, then what I would do is I would go and look for empty cartridges. Like, do they make empty cartridges that go with that printer that I can put sub ink in? And then that would be kind of what I would gear towards and then look at price and all that kind of stuff. So, um, when you order one of these printers, if you get the 7210, the 7720, um, something like that that you're going to convert and you get your, you pick out your empty ink cartridges and sometimes it comes with a kit. You can get um, sub ink. Like I have all kinds of different sub inks. I've tried different kinds for three years now. I don't ever see a difference. My images pop. They look great. Um, I've even mixed brands of sub ink. Never had a problem. So I can't say I'm partial to anyone. Um, I know that some people get really partial to them. I have never noticed a difference. I can't tell anything. So I just mix whatever. I use whatever I can get cheap. Um, this brand right here, um, they are really good about running sales and doing Am Amazon coupon code. So I sometimes can get a box of this for like five, six bucks. Um, I've even gotten a couple free boxes. So you better believe I'm going to use it when it looks good. So um, anyways, when you go to take your printer out of the box brand new and you already have your empty ink cartridges, I always try to keep extras on hand. Like these are empty, brand new, never been used before. Um, right now I have a mix of some old ones and some new ones in here right now that I'm using just because some of them were starting to beep at me more than my brain wanted to handle. So I replaced a couple of them um, just a couple weeks ago. But you take and, and and fill these cartridges up and you see these little things. I just pull these little tabs out and um, you use a needle uh, to fill them up with ink. And you just want to make sure that when you're converting a printer that you do not put the regular ink that your printer comes with originally in that printer. Do not do that. If you do that and you start running that ink, you got a mess to clean up right off the bat and you're like... It's not a fun one because you got to run all that ink out somehow and get it all out. Um, so you just want to make sure that you take your empty cartridges like from the get-go and 
literally fill them up with your sub ink and install those straight out of the box. Okay, so you're not your that that original ink cartridges that your printer's going to come with. Just set them aside. So if you ever sell your printer or you ever want to convert it back or whatever, but you don't need that. So no regular ink, no regular ink cartridges. Use your empty ones that you buy. Your empty ones have already been fitted with the computer chip that at times is going to be a pain in the butt, but they will work. Okay. So like when, when I get ready to fill one up, I filled most of these up already this week. So, but there was one I didn't fill up because I was in a hurry. So my yellow is just running a little bit low. So what I do is I just take see if I can lower this for you a little bit so I just take and I have a syringe with a little needle that just pushes on here you can buy these little needle kits um, just look on eBay or Amazon or whatever and it just literally fits on I've been using the same one this these I've been using for over two years same needles and everything um, and I just rinse them in hot water. They clean up very easily. So you take your bottle of sub ink. Uh, I'm going to finish off this Cosmos. Like I said, my ink is all mixed. I'm sure that there's other kinds in here right now, but I'm going to finish off this bottle in particular. Um, you literally just pull it up in your syringe like this. Pop this little yellow tab put your needle down in that little hole kind of watch I always try to hold mine a little bit sideways so that I can see where the ink is going make sure that it don't overflow out on me Boop. and it did It did take us a while to figure out how to do this by ourselves because we didn't really know the language as to what videos to go look for, what could be done. Um, it was a lot of trial and error. My husband and I both like just messed with this kind of stuff until we figured it out back a few years ago. Okay, so this one is full, so I'm going to put that little yellow thing back in that hole so you got one hole that's empty in your ink cartridge that's like for airflow and one that's going to be plugged now that's where you fill your ink so don't lose those little tabs make sure that you keep hold of them so we're just going to pop this back in here make sure it pushes down to where it clicks close that close that now what's going to happen more than likely most all the time what happens is my printer's going to yell at me, my computer's, my laptop's going to yell at me and tell me that um, I have not installed genuine Epson ink cartridges, which I already know that, but it's, it will yell at me a little bit, but then it will, um, see it's yelling at me now. So, It's basically a matter of being stubborn with your printer. You keep hitting buttons and telling it, yes, I know, or checking it when it's trying to tell you you have to check it. Sometimes it does this to me when I'm in the middle of doing working on an order or whatever, and I will literally just open that thing, shake my ink, put it back in. Um, sometimes I have to wipe off the little chips. It just depends. Basically, you're tricking your printer to print something that it doesn't really want to print. Um, sometimes I take little Q-tips and just make sure, and just in case you get any ink or anything, you don't want to get anything on these little chips because it's, it is trying to read those chips. That's how it prints and recognizes your colors and stuff. So it's just a matter of being patient with it. Try not to worry or flip out or anything. See, right now it's telling me information. Um, Checking the ink cartridges, replacement, replacement complete, okay, done, okay, proceed. And 
it tells me to open the printer cover again. Sometimes it does this five or six times and that's the only option it will give me and it will not allow me to do anything else. Sometimes it just goes straight to telling me that, hey, you don't have the right ink cartridges installed. I am going to flip this an image here and try to make it print something. Your first print after you change um, your cartridges or refill your ink seems to take forever for some reason. I don't know why, it just does. Like I'm just always braced, like I know it's gonna take time. I try to make sure that I do my um, maintenance regularly and keep an eye on my printer. Like if I, if I know that I've printed a lot of stuff for a while, um, back to back, then I try to make sure that I try to make sure that I go ahead and fill up my ink cartridges or check them and do maintenance when I have time to, when it's not going to stress me out, when I'm not in a hurry trying to get an order done or in the middle of a project or something, because that just gets to be a pain in the butt. Um, We're going to try to print something here and see if it gives us that alert and tells us that we don't have our genuine ink cartridges installed. So on my laptop, and I honestly don't even know what software I'm using. I'm assuming it's Microsoft of some kind. So I flip my image and everything and I'm just printing it as 11 by 13. That's the size I do most things on. So I just sent it to the printer. So we'll see what it, what it says to us in a second here. I used to get frantic about this. I used to get really stressed out about it. Like, is it going to work? You know, that kind of thing. And I've learned to kind of calm down and just understand that the printer's going to yell at me. Just take the time to be braced for it and push through it however many times it decides it wants to yell, but that it will eventually print. It's actually going to just go ahead and print, I think. It makes a lot of weird noises for a second. Your first initial print after refilling your cartridges or installing them. When you convert a printer, some printers are going to want to have automatic updates turned on in, inside of the, um, the install. Um, the 7210 didn't have that. I didn't have to turn anything off, but when I had the 7720, I had to go in and, and turn off the automatic updates. You don't want your printer automatically updating and you don't want to power it off um, because it just will reset everything and then you'll have all kinds of crazy problems with it. So I leave mine on at all times. It auto kind of like partly turns off, um, but I leave it on at all times and I don't do any updates on my actual printer. I just let it go. Um, that way it, it doesn't give me any more fits than I needed, you know, than what I know how to deal with. It says that it is printing, which it's probably going to say that for several minutes before it actually gives us a print. Sometimes after you refill your ink cartridges, um, you'll have to do several nozzle checks and print head checks. I think the worst I've had with this specific printer since I've converted it was doing like 12 in a row of the print head checks because my yellow and red was like not there. Everything was printing only in blue and black. Um, and I just kept going, going, going with it and it kept getting a little better, a little better. Um, finally after 12, it finally worked itself out to where it was fine, it was printing right. My checks were looking great, like on point. So, I mean, a lot of it is just knowing, just be patient with it and just understanding that you're basically tricking the printer to use a different type of ink than what it's actually created for with um, chips that it doesn't recognize to be completely genuine, but they are, they will still function in there, okay? I have not had the pleasure yet of having the um, Echo Tank type printers. I did buy the, I think it was the 2720 at one point Echo Tank. As soon as I got it unboxed and got it out and set it up and put, went to put ink in it, it literally was pouring ink out the bottom. So I turned around and returned it right off the bat. 
the seller had contacted me and apologized and said that um, somehow there was something inside of it that had cracked and I just it left a bad taste in my mouth to where I was just like I'm not gonna do that again so I ended up going for this one again um, which this one prints the bigger images I need anyway most of my customers are 2x or 3xers so like I need at least to do 11 by 13 images on most things so right now this is saying paper type does not match, um, which is normal for my printer because I don't have my paper settings all coordinated. So it just wants me to hit yes or no, do I want to proceed? So I hit the yes on there and it is printing. pretty good so we just did a country roads take me home print so that's how um, just kind of some basics of like when you get ready to refill your ink or if you're getting ready to convert something so when you get ready to and I use a Ethernet I think these are called Ethernet cords where I just run one I had to buy this separately um, but I literally just run it straight from my printer to my laptop so as long as that's plugged in then I don't mess with the Wi-Fi and stuff because our Wi-Fi is on overload around here all the time anyway. But I just use an Ethernet cord directly to my laptop so it prints fairly easy. I also have another printer that I use for other stuff when I do like the laser jet kind of crafting stuff. So um, that way I can have two different printers installed on my laptop and it not cause problems. I just have to use them with Ethernet cords. So um, hopefully that helps a little bit. Uh, I know that the 7720 and the 7710 of the Epson Workforce wide formats both print the bigger images. They are both fairly easy to convert over. You can get the empty cartridges, the needles, the syringes, all of the stuff that you need right there on eBay, fairly cheap. eBay is usually cheaper than Amazon on this kind of stuff from my experience. So I just wanted to jump on and just make this video just to kind of maybe help some of you out that are looking at different printers. You want to convert something, but you're not really sure how or what to do. Um, those are the basics. When you take that printer out of the box and initially unpack it all and go to get it all hooked up and everything, do not put that original ink and ink cartridges in your printer buy an empty set of cartridges that the numbers match like when you go and put an empty cartridge number 7210 or epson 7210 or whatever and it's going to give you most cartridges will fit like three to five different printers make sure that you just match those things up and then fill them up yourself and install those like right out the gate right out of the box and you shouldn't have any problems okay hopefully this helps and thanks for listening